Hey YouTube, Apple Dev here for the sixth, or yeah, for the sixth tutorial in the uh, Programming 101 series. Um, today is just going to be more on arithmetic. Last time we talked about all of the operations you can do, uh, increment and decrement, as you see here. Uh, today, what we're going to do, however, is we're going to move on to um, some things that you have to watch out for when doing arithmetic. Um, the thing about arithmetic is that it, um, it, there are some catches, I guess is the best way to put it. The compiler doesn't always do what we want to, or what we want it to, um, and because of that, you have to be very careful about what you tell the compiler to do. Um, and the best example of this is with division, although it sometimes happens with multiplication, and uh, I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, but here we're just going to uh, jump right into it. So the first thing that we're going to look at is division. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to uh, create actually a third variable um, uh, in each of these. Alright, so what we're going to look at is we're going to look at what happens when you divide doubles versus dividing integers, or dividing floating point numbers versus dividing integers. And you see, when we divide... Um, when we divide uh, floating point numbers, we'll say double div 1 over dub div 2. And let's print that. And then we're going to do integer result int div one over int div two, and we'll print that. So we're going to go ahead and run the program. Sorry, I just uploaded to the official release version of Mountain Lion, so you got to type in the password again. And once we run it, all right. So let's look at our output here. So we're going to run it. What you're going to see is that when you divide 5 by 2, but you do it with floating point numbers, you get a 2.5. But you'll see what happens is when we divide the integers, you just get a 2. And what this is, is it's called truncation. Um, essentially what truncation is, is it literally just chops off the end. Um, so if you get... And it's not... It's different than rounding. Um, and that's the problem. Uh, sometimes, you know, if you want to divide and then round the answer up, um, you, you can't do that uh, with integers. Uh, with, if you divide an integer, it's going to chop off everything past the decimal point. Um, you could have, you know, you could have done, you know, you could have done, uh, I don't even know, you could have done uh, 9 divided by 5 would have given you 1.9999, or which would have given you 1.9, still not going to round up by 2, or to 2. Um, essentially, the problem here you have to watch out for is that um, you have to watch how you store your results. The other thing that you have to watch out for, um, there's not really a way to demo this, but uh, some com all compilers act in different ways, and some compilers are even inconsistent, which is kind of an oxymoron in a way, because the point of a compiler is that it does exactly what we tell it to, no more, no less. Um, sometimes with multiplication, uh, as well as division, but more often than not with multiplication, is that um, 
the compiler can be unpredictable. Um, and what I mean by this is, if we would have done, is if we're talking about multiplication, and we say, um, let's say we say double result equals int, no, let's say we say 5 times 2, um, some compilers will give you actually an error on this and say that it's a loss of precision because you're going from integers to doubles. Um, whereas if we would have done, and likewise I guess, if we would have done 5 point times 2 point, some compilers again would have given us the same loss of precision error because they would have seen this as a floating point number trying, that you're trying to store into an integer. Um, so that, that's, I guess, the other thing you have to watch out for is multiplication. So that, that's the biggest thing. You have to watch out for how you're going to uh, store your results and what you're going to do. Now, the best way to make sure about this is to, um, when you're storing to a double, make sure that you're only doing arithmetic with doubles. And what this might mean is that you're going to have to cast. And the way casting works is you're essentially changing the type of the variable. So if we want to change double result to the value of int div 1, what we're going to say is we're going to say double int div 1. And it's that simple, but then what that does is it changes the value of double result instead of an integer like it is up here and up here, and changes it to a type double. Um, and that's the best way uh, to avoid these errors, especially um, when you're doing arithmetic, um, but I guess the, e the even easier way to avoid that would have been instead of doing it that way, just do it this way. Um, because, again, the problem is, based on what we do, um, or how we do our arithmetic, we're going to lose precision one way or another. Um, when speaking of losing precision, the other thing I want to talk about with arithmetic, uh, and specifically floating point numbers, is the way we store our floating point numbers. Um, between float double and long double. Um, and for this, I'm going to open up a numbers document that I had uh, created earlier. Um, and essentially what I'm going to show you here is uh, both a crash course lesson on binary and uh, how our computers store numbers. Um, so, the first thing I'm going to show you is a crash course lesson on binary. Um, once numbers finishes loading up here, So that's actually, oops, I think I clicked something there. It's actually not what we want. So we're going to change that back to a zero. And you're going to copy that quickly. And we're going to say that is one, two, four, eight. Alright, so that was a quick setup, but essentially what, what I'm going to show you now is binary. Basically, binary is ones and zeros. That's where the word binary comes from. Uh, bi meaning two, nary meaning terms. Um, so, essentially what that means is that every binary bit can hold two values, a one or a zero. Um, a one generally means on or true or yes, and zero means off or false or no. Uh, any variation, any way you want to remember it. Um, 
And essentially what binary is, is it's an alternative way, alternative way of counting. Uh, and what you'll see is, um, essentially the way to count in binary is you add up all of the bits that are turned on. Right now this number in binary is zero, and it's represented on an 8-bit uh, computer uh, with essentially eight zeros, zero, 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 zero. Um, but you notice if we change this end bit to one, now in binary, that's a one. And counting with binary is pretty simple. Uh, zero, one goes to one, zero, then to one, one. Uh, but then you notice that if we're just using these two bits, we run out of room. So we move to a third bit, and we say one, zero, zero. To that, now we have four. You say 101, 110, and you get the idea. Um, so that's essentially binary. Uh, it's pretty simple once you understand it. And essentially, it's a way of counting. Um, and that's why, uh, and you'll see, this is where when we talk about um, when we talk about like 8-bit or, or when we talk about 32 or 64-bit computing, like we talked about in a previous lesson. This is where it comes from. Uh, if we would have kept going, we'd have had 128, then 256, then 512, 1,024, 384 and 32,768. And if you'll notice, that's the number we talked about when we had uh, when we had something that was two bytes uh, or 16 bits. There are eight bits in a byte. Uh, if we had something that was two bytes long, uh, can hold 32,768 values. If we uh, keep going on. could see if we had a 3-bit representation of something. In 4-bit, that's when we get down to 2.15e to the 9th. Um, if we were to have something that was... Bytes, rather, sorry. We had something that was eight bytes. You could see this is where our 9.22 e to the 18th comes from. Um, so, long story short, basically, that's binary. Uh, let's see, count in binary. Um, so, I guess that's our uh, crash course. So now that you understand binary, uh, I need to show you how they store floating point numbers. In floating point numbers, the front end of the number is stored this way. It's stored with, uh, to the left of the decimal place, it's stored 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, etc., all the way down to the max value of whatever you're doing. However, on the other end, there's also the, uh, on the right side, there's the decimal end. Um, and that is stored using the other half of the bits, because let's say you're storing a number that uses a 4-byte storage system, there's going to be 16 bits to the left of the decimal and 16 bits to the right. And on the right side of the decimal, the actual decimal part, uh, that's how this is stored. Or that's how that is stored. Or this is how that is stored, as I guess the best way to put it. Um, and essentially what happens is instead of storing it to the powers of 2, 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1st, stores it to the powers of one-half, so it's one-half to the to the first, one-half to the second, one-half to the third, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so essentially what happens is to represent the number, point, or, uh, to represent the number 0.75, you do one-fourth plus one-half, so that in binary, that's represented in 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. Um, the catch is, you can understand how numbers can get less and less precise. 
um, which is why you always want to make sure you have a number of a uh, large number of bits. Um, if you're using generally computers rather than actually doing half and half like I just explained it, they'll use the minimum number of bits it can for the left side via whole number bar. So that way it can use the most number of bits it can for the right side, giving you the most accurate result. So let's say the number on the, it's 1.013457. It's only going to use one bit on the left side of the decimal because that's how much it needs to represent that number one. But then on the right side of the decimal, it's going to use the other however many bits it needs in order to represent that, or however many it can. But again, you can see where you run into problems with storage. Let's say you want a really specific number in a storage format that really that only uses um, sorry, in a storage format that only uses two bit or two bytes. Um, can see where the problem would come in. Um, one over five twelve. Sixty-four, sixty-five, four, fifty-six. 64, 65, 4, 56. So, you get the point. Um, but you see how representing a number like that, even on a two-bit or a two-byte system, the most precise you can get is down to essentially four thousandths. Uh, so you can see how it's very easy to lose accuracy when you're storing, storing numbers with large decimal places. So I guess what I'm saying is make sure, you know, if you're trying to store something that has six or seven decimal places, don't use type float, use a double, use a long double. Um, I guess just make sure you're using the right type. I know that's kind of long, and just kind of me randomly typing stuff. But I guess what I'm trying to get you to understand is make sure you're choosing the right data types and the right types of arithmetic, because it's very easy to mess up an application uh, just by using the wrong data types. I know I've done it many times, and it's very embarrassing to release an update that says used an integer instead of a double, uh, things like that, or used a float instead of a double, or a double instead of a long double. Um, so just make sure that you're always getting more than you need, but you're not using too much. If you need something, you know, if you're using a number that only goes out to the tenths place, don't use a long double, because you don't need eight bytes or whatever to uh, store your number, you only need one bit, uh, or two bits, or whatever. Um, just uh, don't, don't be excessive. Um, you want to use as little memory as possible, but use enough memory that you're going to be as accurate as you need to be. Um, so with that, I'm going to leave you. Uh, I'll figure out what we're doing in our next tutorial. Um, and until then, uh, keep viewing and keep subscribing. Thanks.